When it comes to uh, slavery, we may well be called the United States of Amnesia. We don't want to remember uh, slavery. We want to remember the Alamo. We want to remember uh, the, the Maine and other things like that. But we don't want to uh, remember slavery. We don't want to talk about it. And I think reparations will also be a healing for this country in terms of getting blacks and whites talking more logically and truthfully about enslavement in this country. Family, you all know what black people have been going through in the U.S. You all know the history of black people in the U.S. The suffering black folks have been going through. The slavery their forefathers went through in the history of the USA. And guys, on today's video, we want to talk about reparations and why black folks need to be compensated for all those um, atrocities white folks made them pass through. So in today's video, we want to talk about Raymond Winbush, a scholar and a researcher known for his work on African-American history and psychology. He's a strong advocate for reparations for African-Americans. He has written extensively on the subject, focusing on the historical, social, and economic justifications for, repercussion, for reparations as compensation for slavery, segregation, and the long-term impact of systematic racism in the United States. So guys, I want us to watch this video of um, Raymond Winbush talk about why black folks need reparations in the u.s then um after the video ends we'll stop it and do a critical analysis of the same let's watch these guys our guest is a native of cleveland he currently lives in baltimore ray winbush earned his doctorate and masters from the university of chicago he is currently a teacher at morgan state university this email from bedford texas says i'm a caucasian who favors reparations for the descendants of slaves the U.S. government does have a duty to pay reparations if for no other reason than they played a part in the slave industry via the constitutional provision, Property Clause, which was a concession to the South to end the Civil War, which allowed slave owners to keep their slaves. And one point that this viewer brings up is the slave diet, which was notoriously poor and affected generations in terms of certain illnesses. Absolutely, and one of the things that we include in the book, uh, Steve, is a discussion about the health consequences of enslavement. We know for a fact that uh, American gynecology was founded on the experimentation towards African women and uh, who were enslaved in this country, uh, and they, those operations were performed without sterilization or anything else of that kind. I think that what we do in America, uh, Michael Eric Dyson, the educator, says that when it comes to uh, slavery, we may well be called the United States of Amnesia. We don't want to remember uh, slavery. We want to remember the Alamo. We want to remember uh, the, the Maine and other things like that. But we don't want to uh, remember slavery. We don't want to talk about it. And I think reparations will also be a healing for this country in terms of getting blacks and whites talking more logically and truthfully about enslavement in this country. Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, yes, uh, if we're ever going to achieve true racial equality in America, we're going to have to eliminate all of these laws that favor or discriminate against anybody because of their race. Now, the black race is favored at the present time by a number of laws, as is the Indians, and we need to eliminate all these laws that favor or discriminate because of race. Now, as far as slavery goes, it was a terrible institution. But most of the blacks who live in America today indirectly benefited from slavery by being brought to America and not left in Africa, where many of them would have starved to death, as many of them are still doing. Well, th this, is, this is not as amazing as some of your listeners might believe that people actually say have said to me well isn't it good that we were enslaved since we were brought from a continent that was undergoing poverty and again it shows the lack of understanding of African history and African American history the, the fact of the matter is is that civilizations such as Timbuktu Songhai and Ghana were flourishing beyond that of Europe during the Middle Ages and that people want to forget about that and somehow jump to the in incredible conclusion somehow slavery was good for African Americans again I think that this is mostly based on an ignorance 
of uh, American history as well as African history, which we all need to deal with. Where is your family from? My family is, my mother is from Kentucky. Uh, she was the uh, great granddaughter of a slave owner in Kentucky. My father was, uh, relatives are from uh, Pennsylvania with roots in Virginia. This email from a viewer who said, I'd be for reparations if the Supreme Court did not just say it's legal to discriminate against white people. Well, it's amazing those who are opposing, quote, discrimination against white people uh, somehow have gotten religion about the, the racial past of this country. The fact of the matter is, is that, uh, as uh, Clayton and Byrd have said in their book, American Health Dilemma, only about 11% of the time that African Americans have spent in this country have been, quote, free. Uh, the, the vast majority of this country's history has been based on overt discrimination and violence towards uh, black folk. I mean, that's just a historical fact. And I think that now what we're trying to, you know, believe is that somehow, as one of the callers said earlier, that there's a meritocracy here that people get what they want because of hard work. In fact, that simply is not true. Discrimination still reigns in this country relative to African Americans, and it's something that's part of the very culture of this country. Harper Collins is the publisher of the book Should America Pay. Our guest is Ray Winbush, who is the editor of this 325-page uh, book, and we'll get a call from New York City. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Winbush. Good morning. I would like to say thank you, first of all, for your very articulate discussion. And uh, I would like to say as well, as an African-American, I lived in Switzerland for 10 years, and I found it very interesting how Europeans uh, in particular were more educated about the issues of the Africans in America and the issues within America as far as slavery are concerned and where African people actually come from with reference to the Americas and the different parts of the world. Why do you um, think that is, caller? I believe it's because it's like he said, America wants to have a collective amnesia and we have not been properly educated in this country about slavery, about how Africans arrived in America and what actually transpired after that. We pretended that we just came from slavery, uh, our history books, as far as we were taught in Texas where I grew up, uh, there was probably two paragraphs about it and that was the end of uh, history as far as black Americans knew. We were never articulate about it, we were never informed, we had no defense, so we're at the mercy of people like the gentleman who called two calls ago and said that he feels that blacks um, got a better deal uh, coming from Africa and being drowned on ships and treated in the most dehumanizing manner. We'll but we can obsess about the Israel question and what happened to the Jews with the German Holocaust. No, I agree with the caller 100 uh, percent. I think that, again, I was a member of the a delegation that went to the World Conference Against Racism a couple of years ago in South Africa. And groups like December 12th out of New York and other groups, uh, it, it was amazing to see Europeans talking about African history and African American history better than most Americans could, uh, could and did. And I think that it's perhaps educational systems. We want to talk about the dumbing of America. But I'm a really, as an educator, appalled at the lack of knowledge that we have about our own country and particularly the history of African people in this country. Along those lines, this is an email from Robert who says, Mr. Winbush, I am an African American man and have been doing my family history. Would have what I found in the archives of this country confirmed that my ancestors were slaves in North Carolina. I think that doing family research is a great way to find out who should receive reparations. Still, some people find it hard to let us find our ancestors by denying us access to records. I, I couldn't agree uh, with the caller more. One of the things that has just thrilled me as I've gone across this country with uh, the book is to see African Americans who have like collected incredible data put it together, synthesize it, and can present an, an articulate story about their cases. Uh, there's many people who have written me, uh, we have, and others. And that research is what's going to get Af uh, reparations for African Americans in this country. And I believe that it's going to happen within five to ten years as well. Our guest has his own website, which is linked through cspan.org. It's RaymondWinbush.com. Next is a ro call from Romeo, Michigan. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Am I coming through all right? Yes. Okay. Um, this uh, I think that this thing could have uh, many threads. Uh, let me mention a few of them. Uh, for, I think there was a gentleman sitting where you are who wrote a book on C-SPAN 
uh, I think it was prior to the 2000 election. He's sitting right where you are. Didn't he write a book? He would mention the remunerations and Conyers. But do you remember we, the we gentleman? We have talked about this in yeah, the past. May have been Randall Robinson. A anyway, um, I, I think that uh, prior to the 2000 election, this has a thousand threads, you know. As the World War II veteran, uh, why couldn't men were killed and injured uh, uh, sue the Jews for money for saving them in World War II? Or, uh, or we could go back and do our history uh, and find many instances. For, um, but uh, a monetary remuneration, I wouldn't... Uh, be in favor of, but if you could specify excellent education for a black youth, I'm all for it. If I understand the question, I, I think, again, that we need to really understand how reparations are a part of international law and a part of the law in this country uh, with regards to certain groups. In fact, after you do the research and do the study, you will actually probably ask the question, why haven't? Africans in America actually gotten reparations because so many other groups have and not only again in this country but around the world uh, we uh, one of the callers mentioned after World War II uh, the Nuremberg trials looked at and, and many people got that were Jewish and uh, part of the Holocaust received reparations there are lawsuits currently uh, being uh, prosecuted in South Africa for the the evils of apartheid and this is going to happen in this country right now it's really a global movement that is uh, uh, very well articulated and very well legislated as well as very well litigated that was a very very nice speech um, from Raymond Winbush on matters um, reparations in the US in his book should America pay um, slavery and raging debate on reparations Winbush um, brings together a range of voices and perspectives on reparations. He urges that reparations are not just about monetary compensation, but about repairing the harm done to African Americans through um, centuries of exploitation and discrimination. Guys, it's not only about money. It's not only about the dollars um, in reparations just to tell black Americans sorry for what um, their forefathers and ancestors went through. It's not just about that. I feel sometimes it's about um, having um, to right the wrongs. What are the white folks or rather the white supremacists doing now in the U.S.? If they are truly sorry. I posted a video the other day of... Um, a white lady um, leading a white congregation into a prayer of um, telling black folks, sorry, you know, if you're indeed sorry, your action should tell black folks that you are sorry. Black folks should not be stopped by policemen just any other time on the roads. Black folks should not be killed by pol policemen as they are driving when they're trying to reach um, their documentation. You know, black folks should stop being put in a constant racial abuses if indeed white folks are ready for reparations it's not just about money you know it's a lot more than money they need to start treating black folks with a lot of respect they need to start treating black folks as um, equals in the society but not as inferior we all know the secret as to why white folks are continuing to push these stories um, in this day and time, they are afraid of um, our genetic power as black men and women. They know that um, our, we are genetically um, dormant, uh, dominant and they know that their genes are recessive. So that has always pushed them to put us into constant um, slavery in the modern day, constant um, racial abuses in the modern day, just to make us feel inferior because they know that we are indeed superior with our um with our genetics so guys um the goal um for raymond um in this specific um video is that um he believes that reparation should include several components such as um the financial compensation for descendants of enslaved people they need cash you know um a lot of people are going outside there trying to find um uh their history, the history of their family, and get trying to get to know who are actually owning their forefathers as slaves. Then from there, they can get a cut in terms of uh, monetary value 
um, as compensation. Then number two is um, institutional reforms that address systematic racism. Just like I've mentioned, it's not just about the financial side. Uh, Bush believes that reparations should um, include several components. It's not just about the financial compensation. There's also the institutional reform, such as um, addressing systematic racism. You know, it's time that all these areas are tackled. If indeed white folks want to do reparations, and it's time that we demand for our rights as black folks. Then number three is a public acknowledgement of the harm caused by slavery and Jim Crow laws. You know, going outside there and say, yo, we, we did wrong to you guys. It's time that we um, correct our um, misconduct, the things our parents did for you guys. We are sorry and we want to start compensating about the same. Just acknowledging it is a step to reparations. You know, the number four is um, educational initiatives uh, to raise awareness about black history, uh, the contribution of African Americans. You know, he also links the concept of reparations to broader movements for racial justice, seeing it is a necessary step towards healing the reconciliation in American society. Guys, what do you think about reparations? Before we continue the video, comment down below. Do you think um, black Americans um, truly deserve uh, reparations? Or what are your thoughts? What are your th thoughts in regards to reparations, guys? Before you continue the video, comment down below. Family, Raymond mentions that the health consequences of slavery made the American gynecologist to be founded because of the experimentation towards African women who were enslaved and those operations were performed without sterilization and all those other medication um, materials that are needed in that timing. So um, slavery um, against our women made um, the gynecologists um, to start their work in the U.S. rather. He says that um, nowadays the U.S. is not known as the United States of America, rather than the United States of Amnesia. When we start talking about slavery, and that really shows you why black people in the U.S. need reparations, not only financially, but in many, many ways. Uh, he says, we don't want to remember our slavery and repara reparations may also be a healing to this country in terms of getting whites and blacks talking more logically and truthfully um, about enslavement in this country. You know, he says reparations will make white and black people to come together and speak logically in regards to what they made us go through, in regards to the atrocities they made black folks go through in the U.S. In this case, that is slavery. Um, he says, um, some people ask, is it good that we were enslaved since we were birthed from a different um, continent and are going poverty? You know, some people feel like um, Africa is poor and um, they're actually glad that they were enslaved. Now they're in a better economy. They're in the U.S. So this, per this person asked, is it good that we were enslaved since we were birthed from a different uh, continent and are going poverty? Then now um, Raymond answers and says that shows the lack of understanding of African-American history. Ghana was flourishing more than Europe during the Middle Ages. The vast majority history of this country has been based on discrimination and violence towards the black folk. You know, he says, you know, he's trying to let people know that um, we need the compensation. The people who are saying that it's better for them to be birthed um, in the U.S., it's better that their forefathers were enslaved for them to enjoy life in the U.S. You know, a better economy, better opportunities maybe compared to Africa, but he refuses and say, no, that should not be an excuse. That shouldn't be an excuse because he says that in those days, in the Middle Ages, Africa was doing better than Europe. And you, you all know the... Um, the mineral components that African, Africa holds. So Africa has been rich over time, you know. Then he proceeds to say, um, doing family research is a great way of finding out your ancestors and where they were as slaves to even know who should receive the re reparations. But some people find it hard to f uh, find their ancestors because um, they are being denied access to their records. 
So family, I think it's time that black folks um, try to find their roots, try to get to know where they root from, try to get to know who was their slave master to their forefathers, you know. Then from that, try and push for their reparations because Africans have been going through a lot. It could be financial reparations. It could be um, the system in the U.S. It's a time that the system in the U.S. starts working for the black folk. You know, there is no way that um, black folk will always be mistreated in the U.S. We are tired of the gun violence. We are tired of being killed. We are tired of um, waking up to a can't breathe messages. We are tired to waking up to black lives matter. You know, those are things of the past. Right now, what we are pushing for is for reparations, financially, compensation. We are pushing for black folks um, to, to be heard, you know, that the system to start working towards ensuring that the black folks are treated as equals. Actually, what I am pushing for personally is that um, black folks are treated as equals in the U.S. If they cannot um, compensate black folks financially, They'd rather make the systems work for the black folk in the U.S. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Kelly, do consider subscribing to my channel for amazing, amazing black stories um, in the U.S., black stories in Africa, black stories in the diaspora. Guys, um, kindly like the video so that it can be recommended to your friends and family. And I'll be so, so grateful, guys. See you all in my next video. And guys, don't forget to subscribe, man. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.